Hey, what's up guys? Jackson here at Toasty DIY, and today we're gonna to be unboxing and taking a look at the Canakit Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit in turbine black with the 128 gig SD card and eight gig of RAM. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So Canakit is one of the biggest authorized Raspberry Pi dealer, along with other places like Micro Center and a few other Amazon sellers, but uh, they're a company that we kind of know and trust. We've used them a couple of times now um, inside of the box. We do get some pretty nice instructions that actually tell us about like the main uh, GPIO header. Um, it actually tells us what every single thing does. So that's really nice to have right in the forefront of opening it. And then we get a note basically saying, don't put the SD card in yet. I assume because once the case is assembled, you'll then put in the SD card. So we do get a lot of really good useful accessories. So we actually get, it looks like two. I believe these are mini HDMI to full size HDMI. They're either mini or micro, I honestly, always forget the difference. That's one of our biggest uh, jokes here on the office. Is we don't know the difference between mini and micro HDMI, but as you can see, full size HDMI on one side, and then I think this is micro on the other end. And right here, this actually says 128 gig Raspberry Pi OS. So this might actually come with the Raspberry Pi OS pre-installed on it. And this is actually a Samsung Evo card. Uh, and it's supposed to be a pretty good one from what I can tell. So it is micro SD, just a very standard micro SD card. Inside of here we get, it looks like our uh, little heat sink. So they call it the Canakit Mega Heat Sink for Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, inside of here, I think this is the fan for the heat sink. Uh, we have a power supply. This is actually Canakit branded. It's USB type C. That is what powers the Raspberry Pi now, 45 watts. Probably a pretty sturdy unit if I had to guess. And this right here is our case, a very cute little case. You can see that fan uh, mounted up top there of cutouts for all the ports that we could possibly need, especially designed for the Raspberry Pi 5. And then here is the actual Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 8 gig version. They start at around $85. Go up from there just depending um, on the kit. Show you guys some of the specs on the back. These are supposed to supposedly be well over 100% better than the Raspberry Pi 4. I think across the board, honestly. Um, I was reading numbers like 250% better in certain applications. Uh, this right here is a micro SD to USB uh, reader. So this is so that you can uh, take this little guy right here and be able to install other OSs and uh, you know like apps and whatnot onto it. We'll go ahead and start off by opening the Raspberry Pi 5 itself. Looks like it's really similar to the Raspberry Pi 4. So we do get some some pretty th uh, thick instructions about how to put like heat sinks and whatnot on. And then here's the actual Raspberry Pi 5. But as you can see, we get two USB 3s, two USB 2s. We get a ethernet port, which I believe is actually gigabit. We do have like some ribbon cable connectors here, a little PoE four pin, so power over ethernet. Here is our two micro HDMI. Uh, it looks like two uh, slightly different ports here. I think that's for a battery, because this is BAT. Uh, this one I'm really, it says U A, so U Art, which could be like an RGB header. Uh, USB type C, that is our power. Get a really tiny little button, which I assume is our power button and LED another ribbon uh, cable connector. And then as you can see, we get that really large, uh, basically a panel for many different options like ribbon cables and other things like that. Uh, on the back side, we just have our micro SD card reader and then a whole lot of surface mounted items. Yeah, very tiny board. Uh, it's obviously it's extremely light. This is the kind of thing that you can make almost anything out of. You see people uh, making things from drones to home servers with these things. There's like endless possibilities with them. They're definitely super cool. So now we'll go ahead and open our kit here. It's almost like doing like a little mini PC build. So here is, I guess it's not literally a fan. It's more of like a shroud uh, for the fan to be able to breathe. That kind of looks like a fan. Um, in typical fashion, it's probably going to be co almost completely toolless. Everything just kind of clips together. This could really go only go in one way. I can see our micro SD card. Now, obviously we do need to put our uh, fan and heat sink on. Really convenient, basically reusable uh, heat pads already on top of this uh, heat sink. It's a pretty nice unit, honestly. It's like all aluminum. So we're going to go ahead we're gonna peel off all of these tiny little covers. They're very neatly placed too, I will say. I should have just used this knife right here. Pop that out, here we go. So we got that little cover out. It's really nice that they actually give us that. And then we can plug in our fan, which should only plug in one way. I'm dropping everything. Everything's so microscopic here. You don't really get like a satisfying click or anything, but uh, it appears to be in the proper way. I guess we'll find out momentarily. You know, they give us a tiny little spot to actually run the cables for the fans. So, and look at that, it snaps into place. This is really cool. So far, everything has been completely toolless. Okay, yeah, the whole entire bottom comes out. All right, it takes a little bit of finessing, but they kind of have it to where it kind of sandwiches in. 
So everything should uh, line up pretty flush on this unit. Hopefully I don't, I might have to plug in the fan last. Um, oh, I need to put out my heat sink on too. I don't want to forget to do that. Now this kind of gets held on uh, just with the, because uh, these pads are a little bit sticky. So as long as I line this up properly. Yep, and they're, uh, they're, they're pretty sticky. I'm picking up the whole thing by it. All right, so we can just feed that back up through there. We should be able to clip this back on. And let's see, did I get this the right way? Oh, we did. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the full tour. So as you can see, all of my buttons and switches are lining up. Just pull it open like that. And then you got the little, I assume that this is like a 30 millimeter fan. Uh, we got a can of kit heat sink on there that covers multiple components, which is super cool. It looks really nice too. It's like a passive cooler, but obviously with this fan, we're gonna be moving a lot of air in this thing. Um, and then you still have access to a lot of your expansion ports and whatnot on this too. But yeah, it looks super cool. It does attract fingerprints pretty easily just because it's kind of like a glossy black, but that's no big deal. And we do have full access to the SD card. I see why they said not to put it in. It probably would snap because the SD card is going to stick out a little bit, but we should be able to go ahead and uh, start testing it out and maybe even see if that OS is already on there. So let's go ahead and boot it up. All right, guys. Well, I got the... Raspberry Pi plugged in, it is super easy. If you're wondering, I'm actually using an Elgato 4K 60S Plus, which is an external capture card. So uh, it's not putting any strain on the Raspberry Pi. But right now, just sitting inside of Raspberry Pi OS, we're pulling 3.8 watts. And keep in mind, that's with an RGB keyboard, a gaming mouse, uh, display out, and the fan running and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on. We're pulling under four watts, uh, which is pretty crazy. I've never even used Raspberry Pi OS. I really have very, very uh, limited knowledge um, when it comes to anything Linux related. So we do get the Chromium and Firefox web browser built in. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of play around in this here for a minute. So uh, let's see, this is Raspberry Pi Chromium. Now, I think we are running on a 4K monitor We've been getting a lot of questions about the RX 7 We're watching it. GRE. You can definitely so tell. We're doing a full build with it. It happens when we go full screen. By our friends at Man, this thing Take is a look at pushing this awesome. it. Yeah, it's crazy to think. Um, yes, this one only lets us do. I think Chromium, this browser only, because this video should be 4K, but I think it only lets us go up to 1080p. We're definitely not getting the, 60, the smooth 60 FPS. I've done a lot uh, since the last time uh, I talked to you guys. We were on the Raspberry Pi OS that came pre installed. And for what I was trying to do, I didn't really think the Raspberry Pi OS would be sufficient enough. Uh, it turns out I was kind of wrong, but we are now on Ubuntu version 23. So we're not on the newest 24.02 LTS, we're just on the 23 point something LTS. Um, and we did some weird workarounds to get Steam working. Now, I wanna show you guys before we go anywhere else, we had to do a lot of commands. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below to a guy's guide that's really good on how to get Steam working on quite a few different Raspberry Pi OSs. But come to find out, if you just run one simple command to get Pi apps, uh, and you go to games, you can actually get Steam through this app and it basically installs the Box86 and Box64, which pretty much gives you uh, the, the Windows slash Linux emulation of 64-bit uh, and 32-bit um, because ARM processors that are inside of the Raspberry Pis will not natively run Steam or Steam games. So you have to basically do skins or emulators, if you will. Um, so I, rec I recommend just downloading Pi apps uh, and you can pretty much do every single game and whatnot that you've, you're gonna see me test out here. Um, now, like I said, we're not using that. Um, we're, we did a lot of work to get Steam working, so we're just using um, what we did. And it's native Steam. Now, it's really laggy. Like just navigating Steam is like horrible, if I'm being honest. Um, most games don't work. You're really only gonna be playing very, very um, indie titles, very, very low, low setting games. Um, and even the ones that seem like they should run sometimes just don't for whatever reason. But I am gonna show you guys a couple games I got to run. Uh, one of them is this one here, Hotline Miami. So we'll go ahead and press play. Looks like this one's gonna be good. We are playing at 720p now. This monitor is 4K, but uh, Ubuntu has a pretty nice, just right click the desktop, change the display settings. Definitely run it at a lower like 720p or 1080p or even lower, maybe you'll be able to play some other games like at 480p. Go ahead and do start game. Yeah, this game's pretty funny. And you can make games um, full screen, I think with, uh, let's see, F11 potentially. I don't even have an F11 on this keyboard. Well, anyways, 
I guess it's really not a big deal. So this is just like a little top down and kind of like fight them, you know, F them up kind of game. So yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's definitely, there's a lot of, you gotta remember Steam has uh, over 30,000 games. If I had to throw some random guess out there, I would say that this Raspberry Pi is probably really capable of playing a couple thousand of those. I am gonna leave once again in the link in the description down below the games that I have tested and what type of results we've had with them. Uh, shout out to Cyberdemon on Twitch for um, helping us get Ubuntu installed on here. Um, really, the installation process isn't too bad, um, but he did, he definitely knows a lot more uh, about Linux than um, us. All right, so uh, this is um, Minecraft uh, Pi Edition. So it's basically like a more simple Minecraft. Um, you don't have like the hunger bar. It's it, how I describe it. It's like a pocket edition Minecraft or even like an OG version of Minecraft. Like a GD launcher. So this is a, it's called Bisec, I guess it's hosted by Bisec Hosting, um, but this is through Pi Apps. Um, you can choose different instances. So you can see here we have like, you know, Snapshot 24W21. This is uh, the version that was like the newest. I actually had to go on like a beta version. For some reason, I couldn't get the newer ones to work. It gave me like this one error that I could probably fix. I just don't know how. Didn't really feel like I'm learning how in all honesty. So I'll show you guys though. You can definitely play some Java Minecraft. It's definitely a little bit laggier um, because it, it has more requirements. Um, and you can actually fully change the settings. It's fully legit Minecraft, which is pretty sick. So let's do like, um, let's see, max FPS. We'll turn it just the fast, turn off smooth lighting. Make it a little more basic. But yeah, it's really not bad. Um, let's see, can we actually go full screen on this one without it breaking? Yeah, for whatever reason, when I go full screen, I can only move my mouse 90 degrees. Like, it cuts me off. I, Once again, Raspberry Pi emulator stuff, it can get a little freaky, but uh, it works just fine in windowed mode. Um, I would say 720p is probably close to your limit unless you can figure out some optimization settings, but the fact that we can run Java Minecraft and we're logged into our account is pretty sick. Let's see, we got some Pac-Man. And I love that some of the stuff is just so light. It's just so easy to open um, that it's, it's just like nothing to run. And this one runs amazing. So this is a good example of like, if you were to get, let's say a, um, like a coffee tip. Oh, get out of here, Minecraft. If you were to get yourself like a little coffee table that had like a built-in screen or something, Raspberry Pi, you know, definitely Raspberry Pi it. Download Pi apps and you got yourself full version of Pac-Man. And it looks amazing. Like it's good graphics, but it's definitely like some OG Pac-Man. And that's pretty much all I got on the Pi um, apps. There is a lot of games though. And there's a lot of other stuff on Pi apps, like engineering, I mean, there's literally everything on there. There's even like Discord emulators. There's a lot of um, emulation softwares where you can basically trick, um, you know, the Linux OS into almost, or I guess you could say the Windows programs into thinking they're on a Windows program. Um, these are the basic things that you may wanna download if you're gonna go the other route for Steam. These are all just things that'll help you run certain games. Well, this is a kind of like standalone, if I remember correctly. I think it's, I guess it's Zontic, I think is how it'd be pronounced. Join. Now this is another one where lowering the, the, the resolution or maybe the settings might help you a little bit because it's definitely a little bit laggy. I would almost describe it as, at the current settings, a little hard to play. But it's still pretty cool though. The fact that we're playing on this tiny little guy is just amazing. I mean, this Raspberry Pi, is is literally about the size of a stick of RAM that would go inside of your PC. Uh, you could probably fit like 10 Raspberry Pis in like a standard full-size graphics card. So, uh, you know, you really gotta give this thing some credit for just how amazing, and honestly the price. I mean, $80 for the base unit, and then for this full can of kit, which is everything you need, uh, you're looking at like 140 ish dollars. Um, and it's cool because you can buy this stuff straight on Amazon, Prime Ship, and, um, you know, you don't have to be anyone special. You can run Raspberry Pi. Ooh, that was a nice one. It's Scum VM. This is, uh, you know, VM is usually a virtual machine. Uh, this was one that was an emulator that I think I got either through Pi Apps or it was actually, there is an app store through Ubuntu, App Center right here that I just clicked on. Um, it can be a little finicky sometimes opening up, but they actually do have games on here as well. Um, they have some games, they have some emulators that have multiple games on them. Um, I'm not sure that I've gotten I almost feel like I've had trouble launching these. Let's just try, let's try Broken Sword, let's see. This one was, uh, what's it called, Scum VM. 
And um, it is a few different games on it. I'm not really sure. This is a really weird, it's almost like a clue style game. So the guy's basically like going around searching for clues and whatnot, I think. But yeah, definitely not my style game, but still pretty cool. And, you know, like I said, without having some Linux knowledge, maybe even some Raspberry Pi specific knowledge, you're definitely going to have um, some trouble. It's definitely a learning curve. I had a lot of trouble. I don't, I barely know anything about Linux. I'm a Windows guy all the way. I do have some pretty decent computer knowledge, but not much when it comes to software. So I have had to watch a lot of tutorials. I've had to look up a lot of guides on how to install things, but I would say overall, the experience is pretty cool. The fact that um, I was able to finally get Steam working on this, now I know some easier ways too. That's usually how it's gonna probably go for you at home too if you're not if you're new to this. Uh, you're gonna probably do some really, really crazy work around things to get stuff working and then come to find out that there's already an app made for it because someone else wanted to do the same thing easier than you did. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Keep in mind, we will be doing a full setup with this Raspberry Pi. So the full Kanakit Raspberry Pi along with a keyboard, a mouse, a headset, and an actual portable monitor for a really cheap price. So it's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited. It's gonna almost be like a little portable LAN party or almost like a laptop setup, basically. So Toasty Rose, guys, check it out. See you all later.